Have you or a loved one ever suffered from pH fluctuations? <laughs> Me too. What's up, y'all? Thank you for tuning in to Deuce of Farms. In this video, I'm going to be telling you guys why I personally don't chase pH anymore and probably why you shouldn't. Before we get started, if you enjoy the video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, as well as turn on the post notification bells. And if you don't like the video and you don't enjoy it, that's cool. Don't be a hater all your life. Do those things anyway. It's only the right thing. Be a good person. I want you all to hear me out on why I personally don't chase pH and after that you may consider not doing it as well but I'm not going to sit here and advocate and tell you that you need to do this or you don't need to do that. That's all up to you but what I will suggest is that you just try it out and see if it works for you. In DWC it's recommended that you stay anywhere between 5.5 to 6.2 or 6.5 with about 5.8 being optimal. And if you've tried DWC, then you already know it never sits at 5.8 all the way. It's going to fluctuate from there and it could change within a day, or two days, 30 minutes, an hour. It could change quite fast. So when the pH moves, what do we typically do? Well, in DWC, we're always trying to make sure it stays at 5.8. So we're going to pH it right back to 5.8 and we're going to try to make sure things are perfect. Sometimes you may find yourself pHing either back down or up. And usually if it's rising up, everything's good. If your pH is increasing, that's a good sign that everything is going well within your reservoir, your plant are feeding well. The reason that the pH rises is because the nutrient content that's within your water, your plants are feeding well. You know, they're consuming that rapidly. Your PPM or your EC is going to be going down. It's going to be decreasing. And guess what? The less nutrients are that's in that water, you know, there's going to be more water compared to that. Because, you know, when you put your nutrients in the water initially, without pHing or anything like that, you're going to see it drop. The pH is going to drop. So as those nutrients leave it, your pH is going to rise. And in my first couple DWC grows, I was constantly chasing 5.8. It had to be at 5.8. If it was wasn't, everything was bad. I knew my plants were just going to die. It was over, game over. Plants weren't going to absorb nutrients. So I was like, it has to be at 5.8. I'll go check it a couple times a day and I'll pH it a couple times a day, whether it's up or down. And that can, you know, cause you to run through bottles pretty fast, which, you know, whoever makes those pH up and down, that company's sitting there like, hey, use it all up. We, you know, come buy some more. So I was, they were definitely profiting off of me. And I hope you guys aren't victims of that. But what I decided to do is I decided to do some research. I was like, why do I have to keep it at 5.8? It's always fluctuating. So Something's got to be off. Is it my air stones? Is it this? Trust me, in DWC, that's like our first guess. Like, is it the air stones? So I'm sitting there like stressing it out. And I'm like, I don't know. What, do, what should I do? Come across some information. I was like, you know what? I'm going to try not pHing my chasing my pH. I'm just going to let it do its thing. If it rises, it rises. If it lowers, it lowers. I'm just going to watch and see what happens. If my plants look good, everything's good. It, it's fluctuating for some reason and I can't control it. So, hey, if you can't beat them, join them. So I'm just going to go with the flow. So that's exactly what I did. I pH, start my water off. I do my water change. 5.8, give it to my plants. The next day, I come and check the pH again. What's it at? 6.1. And I'm just like, okay, 6.1. It's still in range. You know, it's in that 6.2 range. But I'm, you know, 6.5 is like my safe zone. So I'm like, okay, we're good. We're still in range. We still got some room. Next thing you know, the next day, 6.2, 6.3. The day after, 6.3, 6.4-ish, right? The day after that, it's going back down. It's at 6.2. The day after that, 6.0, 6.1. And then by the time at the week mark, I usually change my water out around the week mark. By the time that I did my water change that day before the, you know, that day of, it was at 5.8, 5.9, like a high 5.8, 5.9. So me doing that, like I'm sitting there like, okay, the plants look good throughout the whole process. They were growing rapidly. Nothing was going crazy. I didn't see any deficiencies. So right there, I realized I was like, I'm never chasing pH again. I was like, if my plants can sit here and look healthy, get up to 6.4 and, you know, still do their thing, it comes right back down, then there's no point in me chasing it. All that is happening for a reason. Something's going on. So I'm going to let them do their thing. And ever since then, I haven't checked my pH since. Literally, I do my water change as I'm prepping the water, put it at 5.8, give it to my plants, do my water change. And after that, I don't sweat it. I don't. I leave them alone, let them do their thing. I don't check it. I don't sit there and worry about it. I check it on them daily to make sure like, hey, okay, my plants look good. They look healthy. Oh, my little deficiency, what's going on? Oh, you know, they're just not taking the nutrients. Well, they're getting a little burned. Let me lower the nutrients. And I haven't run into any problems. I've just been letting them do their thing. And it's been so less stressful like I've been it's stress like the amount of stress I have like the amount of stress I was dealing with at first going and ph and multiple times a day I was just constantly worried but now it's just like it made DWC less of a headache right and the only thing I got to worry about is like you know the other stuff like the temps you know water temps you know water level all that stuff the oxygen I don't have to sit there and sweat the little ph like I'm good but what about seedlings because yes they're not feeding that rapidly they're not going to be running through nutrients that fast you're not going to see your ppm plummet you're going to be fine but you're going to see your ph rising and you're like what's going on same thing with them just because your ppm isn't lowering it, it's fine you know me same thing I do 5.8 leave them be they grow I just leave them be. The plant knows what it wants. 
and me getting in the way and mixing things up, the plant's going to be like, what are you doing? You know, the, maybe the plant wants it to increase so it can absorb this nutrient better and it doesn't want that nutrient and then it lowers it to get that nutrient. But if you're constantly sitting there like, hey, this is what you want. And it's like, no, I don't. It's like, you're not my dad, you know? So that that's how it's going, going on. And I do the same thing for my seedlings. I just 5.8 and I leave them be. Yeah, so that's going to be it. Like I said, I don't chase my pH. And after watching this, you may consider not doing it as well. I've had several people come up to me. They're like, hey, blah, 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 blah. You know, we exchange conversations. I was like, yeah, I don't chase my pH. You know, that's how I deal with it. They're like, really? I was like, try it out. See if it works for you. No, you don't have to do it. They do it. Guess what? They come back to me so much less stressful i don't have any problems everything's going good plants still look healthy i checked it it got up to 6.6 6.7 and it came back down i don't really see any problems guess what because your plants they, they're, they're strong you know they're independent they could do their thing i mean they're not completely independent we got to give them a little something because they're not out in mother nature but you know they know what they want they can you know do some stuff and if you start to get way too high like if you go above like seven right if you're going above seven or below five Pretty much what I would say, if you go below 5.5 or 6.5, like drastically, at that point, I would you're out of the safe zone. I would say, like, okay, do some a little adjusting. You don't have to adjust all the way back to 5.8, but get in the happy zone and think about what's going on. You might have the ratios mixed up. You might got some additives in there that just aren't meant to be. So, you know, don't mess with too much stuff. You know, don't try to add too much. The, the simpler, the better. But try it out. Let me know if it works for you. Comment down below. Uh, like I said, like, comment, subscribe. Do all those things. Turn on the post notification bells. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel, you can head to shopdusa.com. Get yourself some merch. Or you can head over to the Patreon and get exclusive access to content. But that's going to be it. Thank you guys for tuning in. Until next time. Peace. This video is brought to you with the help of the channel's sponsors. Spider Farmer is a familiar name to most home growers and that's due to the countless people that use their products. I'm currently using their SC5000 LED grow light which is a 500 watt light and I'm using that in my 4x4 tent. This light fits perfectly within my tent and offers max light coverage throughout the entire canopy. I'm honestly a huge fan of the Barstall lights and they do it right over at Spider Farmer, but the main reason I'm attracted to this light is due to the aesthetic and the accents of the orange that these lights, it just caught my eye and it's part of the logo color so I had to go with that. They have a huge variety of LEDs ranging from 30 watts all the way up to 1000 watts, so it's safe to say there's something in there for all growers. If you're interested in checking out any other products, check out the links down below in the description. They'll lead you straight to their website, as well as Spider Farm and being nice enough to give us a discount code. So at checkout, make sure you use code Deuce of Farms and earn yourself a discount. Yes, I do earn commission from referrals, but it's only 3%, so it's not a lot. But at the end of the day, any purchase will help out the channel a lot.